What's going on folks, you're here chilling with the real Satoshi Oki. In this week's Gala News video, we're gonna be breaking down this video that has been officially tweeted on the Gala Games platform. Now, Jason Bitbender Brink has officially said that this is possibly one of the most important videos concerning Gala that has come out in a long time. So Rep, for those of you that don't know, is the social media platform that is looking to use Gala Chain to actually run their social media. So of course, Gala Chain, if it's going to be the chain implemented with rep that could have big repercussions for gala tokens so i'm assuming that's kind of what this video is going to be about the tweets there so we're going to dive in have a look break it down give you my thoughts if you enjoy this content you want to see gala do well you're a good part of the ecosystem smash the like button subscribe hit notifications let's check it out Hey guys, this is Jason Bitbender Brink, and I am here today in a lovely studio in Vancouver with Neil Haran, the founder of Rep. Neil, tell us a little bit about yourself. It's nice to be here, Jason. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, so a little bit about myself. Uh, I've been in the video gaming space for about 20 years, a little over 20 years. And uh, yeah, it's been quite the journey. We st I started off in traditional video games for Xbox, PlayStation, that type of thing, and PC. And then um, about 15 years back, I had, I uh, kind of stepped into a little bit of a crossroads where I was going to go down the path of working at Blizzard or working at Zynga. And, um, and that's where I met Eric Schirmeyer, who interviewed me. And uh, uh, like, he basically presented me with an offer and, and just everything about the company just screamed that I was going to be on a path to uh, not so much focus on engineering, but focus on user experience. It was an area that I, I didn't really know very much about before. And uh, I'm glad I went down that path because I realized how important user experience is. And uh, yeah. It's huge. Yeah. It's huge. So you've known Eric then for some time. Now, for everybody who's listening, the, the way that we originally got in touch is when when all of you guys send Eric emails and inbound requests and things like that, he oftentimes forwards those to me. And I received this from him. I reached out to you, we got connected, and here we are today. We met up in Vancouver, which we're, we're both Vancouver-based, so that makes it really handy for us to have a really tight working relationship here as we work to move rep towards Gala Chain integration. But we were able to get together, have a really good few first sessions together and start kicking things off. Why don't we talk about why you decided to start Rep? Yeah, sure. Um, so originally, uh, well, we so we have a gaming company and it's more like a, a gaming company that turned into a, a uh, gaming blockchain lab. And so we built the game Robots which is a which is fun by the way you should check it out and it's a little challenging with the robot building but it think of it as a no man's sky uh but with robot building and a uh, well same like no man's sky an infinite procedurally generated galaxy and so um the the game you know is is about robot building so yeah it is it's got that educational feel to it um but we wanted to have some we want to have a lot more depth to it and so it really did need some kind of a, a social network component to it and the idea there was uh you could find so you could there were the, there are these building blocks that you build your robots out of um think of it the, like lego like building blocks where you just connect them together and you can program them and you can build any kind of robot to battle against your friends or uh, explore a galaxy, right? Build a flying robot and build all kinds of cool stuff. Um, so we're thinking, what if you could find these robot parts like, you know, Pokemon Go uh, around the city where you could collect these robot parts and then seamlessly bring it into the game where you could have, add that extra dynamic to uh, the, uh, the, the game. Um, and maybe maybe you want to have a another uh, like you want to have more depth to the economy, so you could find robot parts. And maybe you don't you don't really want to play the game, but you want to trade those parts with each other, uh, you know, help uh, from other aspects of the economy. Um, so it made a lot of sense to just build a social network. And uh, so why didn't you just you know I mean there's now just to stop it for a moment. I do love the fact that Neil Haran. From at least what I can see from him, uh, mind you, I 
I haven't heard about this guy before today. I didn't know that he was the founder and the CEO of Rep. Seems like an okay dude. I like that his background in gaming, it does seem that he has like an authentic passion for gaming. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I'm just so against people with a lot of money coming into this space to kind of monopolize the gaming industry with real, really no passion behind wanting to actually sincerely make the gaming space overall a better space. So this man, Neil Haran, seems like he's in it for that. He's in it for the gaming. He seems a bit nerdy. By the sounds of this particular game that he's created, it sounds ridiculously nerdy. So we'll put a bit of that up so you can actually see what that is too. I haven't heard of it before, but so far I'm liking what I'm hearing. Let's continue. There's other existing social networks out there. Why didn't you just you know, API into Facebook or, you know, connect uh, the the application formerly known as Twitter or something like that. Why didn't you just use one of the pre-existing solutions? So here's here's a little bit where my activist hat kind of steps in. So before all this block, before, uh, you know, engaging in, in uh, the venture into robots and, and building everything, uh, I, I, I spent four years uh, building or helping build cooperative networks for purely for uh, activism purposes, and when I mean activism purposes, I want to be, uh, I want to be very clear. It's it was to do with understanding uh, how you build cooperative networks and how you help solve certain things like data privacy and building censorship resistant networks. I'm very much about freedom of speech, and um, very much about uh, you owning your own data, and that's what I believe. Like I had come into blockchain in the first place because that's what pulled me into it was was those ethics and and uh, that drive towards a new future uh, where we can w we won't be disrespected by by people by big large corporations stealing our data and, and just to touch on that point about the corporations and the data and where is ethics are at it seems authentic i don't know what do you guys think let me know in the comment section below make sure you smash that like button if you're enjoying the video so far i'm actually really enjoying this chat he seems like you know, a pretty cool gentleman and yeah, I'm really liking what I'm hearing. And abusing it. So the, so the thing is I, I, couldn't, I couldn't use uh, networks like Facebook or Twitter, even though, yeah, you could technically uh, tap into their API, but ethically I just couldn't do it. Uh, and a, you know, a little bit about Facebook, I, I deleted Facebook uh, in 2018. So I haven't had Facebook since and it was. It That's was okay. Or you're not missing anything. Yeah. You've missed some of my grandmother's angriest tw uh, posts. I guess they're not tweets on Facebook, are they? But other than that, you've not missed anything. You'll have to send me a, a transcript. Oh, it's a good. <laughs> they're, they're good. They're good. Um, so the the thing is, uh, it, it was actually quite a. It was it was a difficult battle to even try to delete Facebook. But I remember there was that courtroom experience, uh, courtroom appearance by uh, Zuckerberg, where he, uh, I think it was Senator Durbin, uh, he he asked the question. How would you feel if people knew which hotel you stayed at last night? Uh, oh, sorry. Would you would you like it if people people knew which hotel you stayed at last night? And he responded in such a like almost hip, just completely hypocritical, but a blasé way of no, I wouldn't. Of course um, not. But you're you're very comfortable with giving third party access to the most private of data. Um, yeah. And, and like, look at the, you would think that with, with the times, with how much pr uh, push we, and, and also the European Union and uh, many governing bodies have pushed towards, uh, you know, respecting people's privacy and respecting people's data much more. And he seems to be going the opposite direction. He seems to be doubling down when you look at the privacy policy of threads. It's a nightmare. Uh, it's, it's a total nightmare. Yeah. He like in, I mean, I, I'm not even, I wouldn't even be surprised if your camera suddenly turned on. Like, I'm not saying like that he would do that, but at the same time, the privacy well, policy seems to be very egregious. So, so, so the, this is one of those interesting things. I mean, Facebook is a massive company, right? Um, or Meta, I guess, sorry. Meta is a massive company. And this isn't like there's, you know, Mark Zuckerberg is sitting there in front of a control panel turning people's things on and off. But what you've created is you've created an entire industry that is predicated entirely on vacuuming data out of people and commercializing that data. Okay, and, and it's done. I have to say, you know, 
I do agree with these points that these gentlemen are bringing to the table 100%. You know, I think when big institutions are involved, you're never gonna have 100% privacy, but it just doesn't mean that you know, you should be just selling or giving out people's data for nothing, you know. I think people should have an opportunity to opt in to give their data, give their feedback, like Brave Browser for example, you can opt in to have personalized ads and watch ads and actually get paid in Brave Token for that, that's a good model. You know, Facebook, if they're gonna give out people's data, then they should give them that choice clearly and they should be paid for that in my opinion. So, you know, I'm, I'm right with these guys. I'm loving what I'm hearing so far. With, from a sort of completely laissez-faire uh, perspective of, well, it's just gonna make it easy for you to buy stuff because we know what you wanna buy so we can put it in front of you and make it so that you have to spend less time choosing which things to buy because we'll choose for you, right? But the problem is, is that that doesn't really fit with that ethos of data privacy and that ethos of you know, self-sovereignty and these sorts of things. And so this is one of the reasons that when you and I first started talking about this, it resonated because this is one of the reasons that I got into blockchain, right? I don't like the idea that uh, you know, a, a centralized authority of any sort can just be like, yeah, we are gonna just turn off your bank account because we don't like the stuff that you've been doing. You know, we, we, we disagree with that. You've you know, uh, said something, you've posted something on Twitter we feel is, is objectionable, therefore, you know, you can no longer be a customer. I don't even wanna be a customer of a bank. If I could, you know, never use another bank again, I'd be quite happy with that, provided I can still conduct my, my personal business and things like that. So from a social media perspective, this is absolutely critical and this is where Rep, I think, shines. So let's talk a little bit about how rep was started what's the what's the background behind rep you know that's why so for those of you guys that you know are a little bit lost essentially rep is really the solution it's basically a better version of facebook whereby you it sounds like you're going to be able to have rights to your own privacy okay they're not just going to give away your data now look that's all what they say okay that's what probably they're about to say so actions do speak louder than words so you know it's probably going to be some time before we see what rep is really about to give sort of a fair assessment, a fair judgment, but you know, the starting direction is good. I you started it, right? Because of this, this sort of uh, activist hat that you, you talk about wearing sometimes. Tell me a little bit about what the early days of rep looked like, where you started, where things got to, where we are now, and how this inter intersects beautifully with the gala games and gala ecosystem and gala chain and what we're pushing forward there. Yeah, sure. Um, so Rep, well, Rep basically started off as a, a gamified social network where we could uh, have the best of, say, the networks like Twitter uh, or X, whatever. Um, and uh, you get the short form posts, you get the ability to interact with the network. But at the same time, with just as easy as it is to uh, send out a tweet um, or a Rep in this case, uh, it is also just as easy to uh, place or to create a treasure hunt and to be able to interact with your community in a much more gamified way. And so we were trying to solve, uh, we were trying to make the user experience a lot better for the user. And, uh, but so we, the, our journey started off being on the near blockchain. And we were, uh, like, so I had been to the uh, two prior near cons and uh, yeah, just everything uh, screamed. This was a group that was uh, hungry to uh, build something uh, amazing. Um, and it wasn't so much about uh, greed. It was much more about building something that was awesome for the entire community, for the entire uh, blockchain ecosystem to make things user friendly and um, to focus on the community. So that was, that was what was uh, the impression I had. And so I was, I was loyal to Nier for a very long time. And that, that really that, uh, uh, stayed with me for quite a while where, um, so we'd been building rep for a little, I mean, basically about, uh, so total we've, we've been building rep for about nine months now. And uh, so we, uh, we were dealing with certain issues, certain problems with user experience. So 
right now near uh, right now uh, rep is on near testnet and um, so as long as it's on testnet it's fine the user experience doesn't break uh, you because uh, everything is on testnet dollars you don't have to have the user even think uh, about a wallet think about private keys think about anything like that we right. basically create everything for the user and they experiment with it and play with it and that's that's really it right exactly exactly like if i were to think about my mom using rep she can easily do that and she right. knows how to use twitter but there's no way she'd be able to use something on the blockchain so that that is where uh we were we were at and we wrestled with uh trying to get it on mainnet for quite a while because getting it on mainnet technically is not that difficult but but the it's user a mainnet experience, experience. Yeah. which is different, which you has, has keys, you know, you know, your mnemonics, all of the, all of the things that come along with the challenges confronted uh, by anyone going into the space. And, and I think that this is the biggest barrier to massive blockchain adoption that we're running into right now, right? Is it's just impossible to bring people in. Exactly. And this is where it was, it was a really good fit with Gala. Um, because yeah, so like for, for all the points you mentioned, now the user has to get uh, a, a an, now the user has to know about a wallet. They have to secure their private key. They have to for every single transaction. Either I'm either we're paying for the user for each and every tweet, each and every like, uh, sorry, each and every rep, uh, each and every action on the the on chain is a transaction, and you can save certain things by batching. But at the same time, it's a very clunky experience, and so yeah, it was a huge win with Gala. Because, uh, uh, yeah, so we, uh, um, we found a lot of win-wins with Gala, yeah. right? So, uh, f first of all, I didn't have to explain user experience to you. That was actually a very, believe it or not, that's a, that was a frustrating experience with, with not just Nier, but we, 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 we'd been speaking with other blockchains too. And it, was, it, it's, it, it's, it does highlight why the space right. hasn't grown so fast. Well, they have, they have two questions. Uh, a, what's a user? <laughs> And, and B, what's experience? How does this work? How do yeah. these how do these things go together? Yeah, uh, and and when you are trying to tackle like when you're trying to come to the table with solutions, you'd be surprised what kind of solutions were presented to me. Like so, near presented like why don't you just do a near drop, right? The average person, if you tell what a near drop is, you're going to get a blank look, right? <laughs> right. And so that's not solving any problem. That that is basically telling the user that you either get with the crypto program, you either get with the blockchain program or get out. Right. Mm. And the, like alienating users because they're not blockchain savvy is not it's a way to bring in, uh, you know, uh, so near. Yeah, so just on that, could not agree more. You know, the blockchain barrier is huge. Even myself, I've been in blockchain crypto for a few years now, near on five years and no pun intended, but Still, sending even just from an ETH address, you you really got to focus, make sure you've copy pasted it correctly. You know, it's a, it's a lot of mumbo jumbo. It's a lot of mumbo jumbo. So for the new person that you're trying to onboard, it's just, it's a headache. It's never going to happen. Nier's, uh, Nier's whole uh, motto before was on to onboard a billion users. Right. You're not going to onboard a billion users if you have that kind of attitude. So... Yeah, I couldn't agree more with that. Well, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to talk bad about Near here because no, Near's no. Near's doing amazing yeah. stuff too, and 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 uh, you know we appreciate anyone who's building in the space, uh, regardless. And you know, there's we believe that the future is a multi-chain future. Uh, however, we also believe that user experience and onboarding is a critical weakness in the blockchain space in general, and that's one of the things that specifically we're working on tackling. One of the things that I like about what we're doing together. OK, is that with Gala Chain, we have the ability to give people identities, to give them access to their keys, to do all of these sorts of things. And people can use things uh, without necessarily knowing that they're even involved in anything that's blockchain related at all. I mean, right now, for example, if you were to download and play some of our uh, mobile games like Dragon Strike or something like that, um, you connect with single sign-on, you've got yourself an address, uh, and you don't have to do anything with that. You can go through the entire game cycle, you can play the game from beginning to end, you can buy stuff, you can do things, and you have a Gala Chain address, but you don't have to uh, 
uh, interface with it at all unless you choose to do so. And again, this is where this boils down to choice, right? Like it's all about choice and what you want to do. And that's one of the things that's super critical for us. That's a really great point that Jason just made. And I think that's where a lot of blockchain games are going wrong. For a lot of blockchain games, you're not given the choice whether or not to engage with the blockchain. And unfortunately, at least as it stands for the moment, a lot of traditional gamers, when they hear the word NFT, they just hate gaming. They just get up and they leave the room. But if you're given a choice, for example, Superior, okay, it's on Steam, Superior, it's on Grit, okay, sorry, it's on Epic Games, Grit, also on Epic Games, all right? You can play Web 2 versions of Grit, Superior, Dragon Strike, is it, Dragon Strike is another example without getting involved in the blockchain, but you've also got that choice if you do want to at some point, it is there. And that's the way you've got to do it. Just gently bridge over new people and traditional gamers into the space. Make them understand that the game, hey, is actually fun. Whether it's an NFT game or not is kind of irrelevant. And then maybe one day, a percentage of them, which they will, will actually understand, actually, do you know what? I want to get involved with the blockchain stuff. That's how you break down that barrier to entry 100%. So this is just one of many big, big reasons why I'm so bullish on Gala Games, the project and what they're doing. They are aggressively pushing forward with this particular movement, this ethos, this attitude to really support what the user needs, not what the crypto bro needs, what the user that has never seen a blockchain application needs to get onboarded and managed in a safe, fair, efficient manner so they can have an easy learning experience in what is otherwise an extremely complex and taxing industry. So when we look at where rep is going in the future and we talk about choice and we talk about, uh, you know, sort of the, 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 the plan, um, let's first talk a little bit about some of the, the, the rough roadmap milestones that you see in the near future for rep. Um, and, and then we can dig into those a little bit if you don't mind. So right now you're in the process and I, I, I know this because I've been in the meetings where it's your engineers and my engineers uh, meeting and talking about all of the different things needed for the chain, nodes, you know, all of that. What do you see as being sort of a timeline to get a, a, a V1 out on Gala Chain right now? Yeah, so the, the plan right now is to try to get uh, a, a V1 uh, prototype uh, for Gala Friends and Rep in about 90 days. Um, so 90 days, wow. So three months from now, we're gonna have a V1 potentially to use. So let's hold them to that guys and see, because I gotta tell you, that's awesome. You know, I'm definitely gonna be trying this, this V1 out. Yeah, I would say the, 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 the plan is to, uh, before the end of the year, we would have a prototype ready for uh, yeah, both, both, uh, um, both Gallup friends and rep. And, um, and so going beyond that, uh, so, a, so the prototype we would be, uh, would be ba your basic social network, um, where you can do like most of the things that you would expect from a social network, but also, um, would have the gamification piece. You'd be able to participate in treasure hunts. Uh, and we love the treasure hunts, by the way. Yeah. I uh, love the treasure hunts. Yeah. And, and, and so like that, that would be a, a, a great way to uh, really engage your community and, uh, and discover, uh, and, and also tie in the entire Gala, eco Gala ecosystem. Um, so, so there's that, that side of things, which we're hoping to get in the 90 days. Um, and then beyond that, we're looking to have a lot more customization with the profile. Um, so this, I'm, this is what I'm looking forward to pretty much more than anything. One of the things that I hate about all existing social media platforms out there right now is that the social media platform, and this is this, by the way, if James Olden is listening, why I also hate Apple products, um, because they believe that they know the optimum way for you to experience their product. Okay. And it is their product. They totally have a right to say that this is what we think you should do and to, to force you to do that. It is my right then to not use that product. Okay, this is why I don't use Facebook because it has the, well, at least the last time I saw, I used widescreen monitors. And so I end up with this silly little tiny column of Facebook in the middle, a bunch of crap on the outside, which doesn't make any sense at all. Um, and, it, and a ton of dead space, it looks awful, right? I really liked 
this concept of modularity that you were talking about because anyone who's listening this who listening to this who who had a MySpace okay um, I'm sorry by the way about the fact that you're in their mid to late thirties it's unfortunate um, I'm not sure what they're gonna say next but I absolutely loved MySpace because you could actually tailor your homepage and I'm kind of thinking that that's what they're going to get onto now. I loved it. Top friends, popularity contests in high school. You could have your own music, you could have your own background. It was epic. So much better than Facebook. I mean, I don't I have a Facebook account, but I don't use it really. But but it'll it, it's okay. We get, we got this. We're bringing it back. Um the the thing that I really liked about MySpace is it was extremely flexible. You could put your own music on your profile. You could do cool backgrounds. I had the dumbest lime splashing in ice picture on the back of my background forever. I had my, my eight friends, right? I took Tom right off there. We don't need MySpace Tom anymore. I put, I put other people up there. Um, and, and funny thing, uh, Eric Schiermeyer was the CTO of the company that founded MySpace. I don't know if you knew that. Oh, no, I did not know that. You did not? No. You did not know that? No. Okay. There's all sorts of secrets about MySpace, Tom, I could tell you right now, wow. but I'm not going to because I don't know if I'm allowed to. Um, but, <laughs> Alpha. but my point here is that that degree of flexibility uh, was something that I found super appealing. And then when you talked to me. I agree with him 100% me about the plan for rep and and how you wanted to go about that and how it interacts with the entire rest of the tokenomic structure and all of that I, I was blown away by it so let's talk a little bit about that yeah so the modularity um, I think is going to be a, a, a pretty good component of what we call v2 um, so it would be uh, play, like users being able to customize their profile and being able to add widgets of um, all kinds of different new functionality, so they could they could uh, yeah have a much more custom uh, experience, and and people visiting their profile will be able to see differentiation. Uh, it wouldn't be the same cookie cutter uh, kind of profile that you're used to seeing with um, you know X or. Now, now the thing that I like about this though is where do these widgets come from? Yeah, so the widgets would come from like a widget store. A widget store. How do they get in the widget store? Yeah, they they would. Um, I mean, they would go ahead and uh, go Pe to the marketplace. Go, pe people in the marketplace, though, people in the community. And this, again, goes back to right. that point of the, the self-sovereignty and, and the ability to, to, you know, own your own data and stuff. Like, how cool would it be to have a widget in the store? Like, let's, let's say, um, you know, I like video games, obviously, right? So I could then go and I could program a widget, okay? I could then pay a certain amount into the store to get it to go through the certification process so it gets transparently audited so everyone's aware of what it is and the code gets registered and stuff so that you know everyone knows that that's my widget that I made. Then that goes in the widget store and I can make it available to people for free if I'm advertising with it essentially, right? Or I could allow people then to buy that widget so that they could you know, post their, their tournament wins uh, you know, from spider tanks or you know, whatever it happens to be. I really like that. It works even better if I'm in, you know, real estate and I want to have a real estate widget that I use to display houses that are currently for sale or or anything. I mean, like like imagine having a, a your own profile that's like an actual profile for your life that has the stuff that's actually important to you on it. You know, whether it's like your Etsy store or like anything. I mean, I love that. Yeah. Exactly. So you're opening up, like you're essentially opening up this economy and and making use of like the mod modding economy and uh, right. uh, allowing people to to create their own widgets. And that's that makes it so that you you have default functionality, but then you also have this extra functionality that can just grow and and um, uh, set pace with with however the ecosystem is growing. I love it. Now, in the long term. This is one of those things that we've talked about. This is like one of those, those ethos stakes that we put in the ground, right? Because for me, uh, with Gala and Gala Chain and all of that, um, my long-term plan is I want to see us become much more up open, much more open source uh, so that other people can start building on it. In fact, um, just this week, a uh, new feature launched that uh, makes the entire node voting process uh, open and transparent. So 
that's going through audit right now should be live here uh, by the end of next week um, or by the beginning of next week, actually. Uh, there's a bunch of other things that we're doing in terms of open sourcing some of the node stuff, some of the chain stuff. We can get, you know, white hat hackers in working on, you know, pen testing things and stuff like that. Do you see a future where rep or part of rep goes open source? Absolutely. Um, the, the goal for rep is to eventually go completely open source. And that ties into the, the whole uh, vision of making everything transparent so that you can see everything is on chain and there is no abuse of your data. You own your own data. And um, yeah, that, that's the vision. So, Perfect. I like that, man. So is there anything? Let us know in the comments, guys, what you think about this chat so far. It's making sense to me. It all adds up. It stacks up. It seems genuine. Again, I know I said it before already, but I'm really liking the direction of where this is going. And I am 100% on board so far. Thing that as I mean, we've had a little bit of a ranging conversation today and, and you and I know this because we have done this before. We can literally sit here all day and have this conversation. Yeah. But, but I know that, that there are those of you who are watching this who probably have other things that you need to do. Um, so is there anything that you would like to tell the, those that are listening about where this is going in the future or, or any closing thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. So I want to touch a bit about the marketplace. Let's talk if about you it. Don't mind. Uh, of course not. So, talk about whatever you want, man. This so is the, cool. So the thing is, uh, that, that is also a very, very big part of the vision is, uh, so while we have customization of oh, that marketplace, profile, yeah, that's important. We need yeah. to talk about the marketplace yeah. guys. Yeah. So while there's customization and whatnot, you, you know, that whole economy that I touched upon with robots, like where, um, you could find a robot part and you could, and by the way, each robot part's an NFT. And when you build your robot together and you code it, that entire robot is an NFT of NFTs all on its own. That whole thing can be then sold in the marketplace. But where is this marketplace? It's going to be in rep gala friends, right? Yeah. And the idea is this marketplace would allow you as uh, the user to be able to uh, trade NFTs with other users, be able to buy NFTs from each other. Um, and it's just this whole economy that opens up where it's not just buying um, and trading NFTs, but you can gift each other NFTs with just as simple, uh, just as simply as basically sending them a message, uh, like a DM with an NFT attached to it. Wow, that's great. I love that idea. Fantastic. And I'm assuming because it's going to be run on Gala Chain, they're going to, you know, find a way to keep the cost really low in terms of the gas. One thing that I don't know if they're going to touch on or not, but I would have liked to have heard something about how does Gala, the actual token, fit into all of this with regards to Gala Chain and everything like that. I'm sure they have plans or ideas, but maybe they're not just they're maybe they're not allowed to share too much of that data at the moment. But let's see. Or you could put an NFT in the park somewhere for your friend. And while they're on their morning jog, uh, they can go find it. You know, it's like it opens up a whole world of possibilities where there's much more immersion. There's much more uh, uh, like this other aspect of uh, engagement. And, um, and so that's kind of the, the vision of the marketplace. But we want to make it so easy. We want to make it really easy to be able to say, you wanted the complexity of adding your main net wallet or something to your profile. Now somebody can just right click your name um, and send you money, you know, send you uh, tokens, send you whatever. And it is completely done without a custodial, uh, like a custodial, uh, like us being any kind of custodian. So that, that's the end vision is that you, you have this social network that's super easy to use that you can trade uh, uh, NFTs with each other. Um, and also with the marketplace, with, with that being able to trade NFTs with each other, we're also looking to make everything interoperable. So for example, um, if, uh, so with robots, we had this wide galaxy, right? Where you can find robot parts on alien planets and whatnot. But what if you could also find spider tanks uh, uh, parts, spider tank uh, weapons? like the, the flamethrower that you have, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and so, like, what if you could find that? And what if you could attach that flamethrower to a robot? So that interoperability, it, like, this paves the way for that. And I think that, um, like, the future is, there's no boundaries on this. Like, we can take right. this in, in so many, many different directions. directions. But we have to keep the user experience 
smooth, smooth and simple. simple. Yes, exactly. Totally agreed. That actually reminds me of something else that I wanted to make sure that we talk about. So um, as I've leaked out to the community, uh, and it's going to actually be starting this coming Monday, there's going to be uh, a little bit of a uh, Gala Gold uh, exclusive uh, sale of the node licenses for rep nodes, which by the way, people are always asking questions like, okay, well, why do you need a node for this? You know, uh, this is one of the first questions that I got from the Gala Gold community. Why do you need a node? You already have founders nodes, okay? I don't think people understand exactly how much data a social media presence produces and you want to own your own data, okay? This is what this does. Now, our Founders Node ecosystem right now represents, depending on the day, between 30 and 50% of IPFS globally, right? Which is freaking impressive. Like, I am very, very proud of that fact. Um, but even that pales in comparison to the amount of data that, you know, a, a social media behemoth uh, produces. And so this is where those those rep nodes come into this. And this is where uh, they, they have certain functionality in terms of, you know, how, how they, they work and whatnot. But one of the things that's super cool is as we move into uh, the sale of these, which we're assisting in facilitating this to a certain extent, um, we're also going to be doing global treasure hunts. Okay, we've got uh, maps figured out uh, in cities all around the world, all of your favorite cities that you guys are in, where you're going to be able to go and find treasure boxes, okay, in a, in a very augmented reality Pokemon Go sense, open those treasure boxes, get clues, put them together. There's probably going to be other stuff in those boxes too. We've got some cool dynamic stuff that's being worked on right now. Uh, collect all the boxes, put the hints together, and maybe get yourself a rep node for free as well. Uh, so there's a lot that's going on there. And so do you want to talk a little bit more about how treasure hunts work and stuff? Because that's something that's super cool and very different about the platform. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, so we'll, we'll talk about the treasure hunts for, uh, like key partners, the people who are, uh, like orchestrating the treasure hunts with sponsors and prizes and, and whatnot. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty simple. Like we have, uh, a, um, like a command center, if you will, where we can just write, look on a global map and we can place treasure hunts anywhere, uh, sorry, treasure chests anywhere. And um, yeah, we can place all kinds of different information inside treasure chests. Like we can place messages, pictures, videos, um, and NFTs. We can put tokens in there. And, um, and yeah, so that, that uh, basically provides a base uh, framework of functionality um, that we can then use to, um, yeah, create all sorts of amazing experiences out there. And yeah, we have we have planned. I, I don't know how much we can talk about it, but we we can't talk about partnerships yet. Okay. We got We yeah, got to yeah. get the partnerships fully fully inked first. Yeah. But one of the things that I really like about this, and for those of you who are part of the Gala community, you're going to like this too. Okay. When you go into that treasure hunt application, you sign in with single sign on, okay, you've got a gala chain address at that point in time. And you can claim that gala chain address at any point in time that you would like, but you've got that now. And that I think is super important because what it does is it has the potential to bring many, many, many users into the gala chain ecosystem, get them on rep, get them interacting. And right now, honestly, man, there's never been a better time to start a social media network because again, Facebook is, is from Facebook. Uh, the, the application formerly known as Twitter um, is, is well, the application formerly known as Twitter and everything else out there is, is, is weird and or janky and or politically slanted in one really extreme direction or another. There really isn't a place that's just, hey, own your stuff. I mean, there's a few other, there's a few other, uh, you know, social media networks out there that I've seen, but they really are, they don't really do it very well. And I think that this user experience is critical. Yeah. And also we're, we're kind of entering a more unique space where we're focusing on gamification. We're focusing oh. on that, that, uh, higher level of engagement that you're not finding in any of these social networks. However, it, it does touch upon the need for a, uh, a very easy to use social network that has all these other components, but also it lets you uh, 
create long form articles, create, uh, share knowledge with each other, uh, you know, have like a functionality that you expect from like Quora to be able to ans ask questions and answer questions, you know, have a thriving community where you have this built in marketplace, you have everything all interconnected, right? So it, it's like your one stop shop social network that's completely on chain, you own your data, and you never have to worry about uh, somebody stealing your data or privacy issues or, or anything like that. And yeah, so I, I think it's a perfect storm, you know? Yeah. And, and, and with AI, it, it like, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's almost like this kind of social network is completely needed, so. It, it absolutely is. Well, Neil, thank you very much for st stopping in here today to say hi and to talk about this. Uh, I think that this is fantastic. I can't wait for this to get rolling out there. I've tested out the test version right now. I love it. I think it's super cool. There's so much more to come from this in the future, and I can't wait for everybody in the Gala community and the growing rep community now to be able to experience the full power of this uh, fully operational partnership between Gala Games, Gala Chain, and Rep. I, I can't wait. It's going to be a massive win. It is. For it everyone. Is indeed. Well, man, thank you very much, everybody. Peace out, guys. And let's go make cool stuff, Neil. Thank you. Deal. Nice one, guys. So let us know in the comments if you enjoyed that one. If you enjoyed the video, then make sure you do smash that like button because it really does help me out on that YouTube algorithm and spreads the message of rep, gala chain, gala games, gala film, music, whatever, to the rest of the world out there. Subscribe as well. Hit the notifications, guys, and we'll catch you next time. Cheers.